Hey, welcome to Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding dreams and visions. I'm Robin Hardin, and my guest today is still in high school, but the amount of years that Luca has been walking this earth has nothing to do with his level of spiritual insight. A little later in the program, you'll see he has a pretty level hid concerning relationships as well. And then Bill Woodson walked up to a woman he's never met before and told her she was pregnant and going to have a little girl. See what happens next. You are in it for a treat today. Luca's back. He was here. We were just trying to remember if it was almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. Time goes oh, by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little younger then. And uh, I can't wait to hear from him now because even then, at a younger age, he was very profound and heard from the Lord and, and had a deeper revelation on many things than a lot of grown-ups that I know. So, Luca, thank you for reaching out. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. You There's a lot of changes in your life. That's right. Very true. <laughs> so now you're a young man. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were still young. I'm trying oh, yeah. to remember. A couple years ago, at least. Oh, yeah. It's, it was two, three years ago. Yeah. It was, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. But the Lord is still talking to you. And oh, yeah. That's awesome. 100%. That's awesome. Well, I know you said you have three, three things right. you want to share, mm -hmm. so I'm going to let you just get on with it. All right. So the first one, try to remember here. Um, so I remember um, it was uh, over on my neighborhood, and it was you go up the road a little bit, and there's a hill, and you're going downhill. And we had my dad was the driver, my mom was the passenger. Uh, and my ex-girlfriend was to the left of me and I was in the middle and then there was something to the right of me but I couldn't make out what it was. Okay. And so um, we're going down this, this, this hill, you know, and that's, it's right outside of my neighborhood. We're going down the hill and all of a sudden my dad starts veering off left into this, there's this big, big ditch. And when he veers off to the left, he almost, we almost fall into it and then he goes and turns it right. So he almost fell into that ditch. But then he kept going, driving down, and seconds later, there's a ditch on the right side. So the first ditch was on the left side. And then now, there's a ditch on the right side, and my dad veers off, and this time, we go into the ditch, and we smash mm -hmm. into the ditch. So when we smash into the ditch, my, my dream, like, changed scenes kind of a little bit, and I couldn't tell, I can't tell you where we were at that time, but all of a sudden, it's just me and my dad. And I'm looking at my dad, and when I look in his eyes, I see evilness. I see something I don't like. Mm -hmm. And so immediately, I start going, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I pointed at it, and I was like, in the name of Jesus, you come out now. And then my dream ended just like that. Mm -hmm. Was your girlfriend, were you all together as a couple... When you had the dream, or was she? We had just broken up, like not even, probably like a week and a half ago. So you were still just ending yeah. a relationship mm -hmm. when you had the dream. Yeah, and I, I'd say probably like a week and a half to three mm -hmm. weeks. It, I can't okay. really remember okay. when I had the dream. Because it had it been like a year or so, she would have represented relationships from your past. Mm -hmm. um, but do you have any uh, insight on that before I tell you what I feel? You know, I. I you know, I, I, I prayed a lot, and I was uh, trying to figure out what it meant, but I just, you know, it just not, it really makes sense yeah, to me, you know? Yeah. I think you're too close to it for mm -hmm. it to make sense yeah, to exactly, you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because it is your family, and it is your father, mm -hmm. and you're in, it's, he's driving, he's in charge of this, this move of God that's happening in that, in that vehicle. Um, at the end, I'm going to skip and come back, but at the end, it's just you and him, mm -hmm. and that's because you are going to be following in, you know, he's the man of the house, but one day you will be the man of your house. Exactly. So it's, it's that legacy. Mm -hmm. um, and not that mom and the, and the girlfriend's not part of it, but in the relationship with the girlfriend, you were probably the, the leader um, spiritually. And, and so this is kind of you, uh, it's almost like the, the you becoming, stepping into that mantle mm -hmm. and becoming the man of the house. Exactly. Um, and your father, like, Every one, not just fathers, but every one of us, as we've gone down the, the road of life, we've made we've made misturns mm -hmm. and, and near accidents, and 
And in this one time, he, it was a real accident. But the nice thing is that you, in the dream, the Lord was showing you that when your dad or any of us run off the road and crash, there's, there's, a, real, there's a real enemy out there. Mm -hmm. And many times it's because of the enemy in our life and whatever it is that we happen to be dealing with, whether mm -hmm. it's depression or, you know, yeah. there's a number of things. Yeah. And you recognized it, and you were able, even as young as you were, in the dream still, but nevertheless, able to determine the difference in Dad mm -hmm. and the evil yeah. that was in yes. him. And you weren't afraid to confront it, even though it feels like you're confronting your dad. Mm -hmm. And in the natural, you would be, but yeah. you're but talking was, to what's yeah, in Yeah, I was there. talking to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that is, that's really big for for any of us to grasp, and for a young person to be able to grasp it, mm -hmm. especially toward a parent. That's you know that's because yeah. there's God and Jesus, and then mm -hmm. there's your parents. Mm -hmm. But you were able to address. This isn't my dad's. Exactly. This is something. This in is there. something else. Yes, and God. the Lord was also showing you that you are able to speak to that and to help your dad. Because we think as young people, we go to mom and dad with our problems. Mm -hmm. But they have their own. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Exactly. They have their yeah. own. And it's very hard, especially for a man, to come to a son because they're supposed to be the strong one. They're mm -hmm. supposed to be exactly. the one doing mm -hmm. it. But the Lord has given you wisdom mm -hmm. and uh, revelation and enough knowledge of the word. Yeah to be bold mm -hmm. and respectful, which I know is not an issue for mm -hmm. you, but to go and, and help your dad. Mm -hmm. So he's placing you there. And I'm, I just got like a feeling to <laughs> right now, feeling the Holy Ghost right now. Um, so actually, I'm pretty sure after that dream, my dad ended up, he, had, he had ended up having a seizure. Wow. After that dream, like, a, a week and a half ago. So this was your you know? dream. And obviously he didn't want to tell anybody. Sure. And, and he had, nobody knows, you know, but I'm really feeling the need mm -hmm. to, to explain this. But my dad ended up having a seizure after that. And m my dad's been changed like that. Like after that, after that occurrence happened. Yeah, good. My dad has, you can just tell. There's something, there's something different about him yeah. and he's battling something. Yeah. And I can see it and my mom can see it. And, you know, obviously we haven't confronted dad about right, this right but he's fighting yeah and we can see it yeah. and we're just praying really hard yeah because I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you like I, when I look at his at his face it's it's the man before that seizure happened it's it's he's a different he's still the same man yeah. but there's something different yeah. about him yeah and, I, and I'm pretty sure it happened after that dream yeah. after That's I had that dream like point. a month after that mm -hmm. dream and so well, think of that. You know, he's been struggling, mm -hmm. and then the seizure was where he hit. Exactly. And and then you were able to say, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're done. Because mm -hmm. any kind of sickness or illness is not of the Lord. We no. know that. Mm -hmm. And you're able to speak to that thing, that evil that's in there, oh, yeah. and, and pull it out. Mm -hmm. Because the devil wants to kill him. He oh, wants yeah. to take oh, yeah. him he out. He wants to take him out, for sure. Does. For sure. And, but he's got... He's got people praying for oh, him. Yeah. People, his son, mm -hmm. his 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 wife. Oh his yeah, son. and we're praying hard. Timing, timing is so important. Mm -hmm. God showed it to you first, exactly, and then it happened. And then when you mm -hmm. hear the interpretation, He yeah. took you right back exactly. to took you right back to it. And now remember this is putting it. it all together <laughs> in my head. I'm just like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. So now you know how to pray mm -hmm. with confidence yes. that you're praying in the right mm -hmm. area. Exactly. That's that's oh, yeah. wonderful that's, news. Oh man, <laughs> Ooh, I got the chills that's, a little bit there. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God is a lighthearted collection of short stories depicting some of Robin's real-life experiences and testimonies. You'll laugh and cry as Robin shares her plight of being the new kid year after year. Take a trip along Robin's spiritual journey, which she describes as straight and narrow and straight up the side of a mountain. And also, okay, so this happened a couple of nights ago. But all of a sudden, like I'm, I have my eyes closed, and all of a sudden I see something. I saw a, a man figure, like a very holy guy, you know, and then there was clouds, and the clouds were open, and he was standing in the middle of it. 
and then all of a sudden I opened my eyes and I'm just like, and it was really random because I was thinking, why would I think of just a guy, you know, standing in the midst mm -hmm. of clouds? Mm -hmm. There was nothing that I was watching or nothing that I was doing that was telling me that. And I'm thinking, did I just see something? Like I just, like it really weirded me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. When I opened my eyes, I immediately felt the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Jude says that we pray in the Spirit to increase our most holy, to build up our most holy faith. And so there's different types of faith, obviously. So we have faith, but as we pray in the Spirit, we build up our most holy faith. Mm -hmm. And seeing, sometimes the Lord shows us things, and I believe it's for those times when we need them, it's down in that most holy yeah. faith that we don't even know that mm -hmm. we need, but obviously we do. I, I take, until I can lay hands on someone who's dead and raise them, then I haven't worked in my most holy faith. Mm -hmm. It's my, that's what yeah. I think. I mean, mm -hmm. I, that's what I believe. And so if I can't raise you from the dead, it's not God's fault, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it's, that's, the, that's the area of faith yeah. that he's talking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if the person did raise up, I'd probably go, whoa! <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, or we go, oh, I knew it wasn't going to happen anyway. But mm -hmm. that's not my most holy faith. Yeah, no. And so that's the, that's the area mm -hmm. that fasting helps and yep. praying in the spirit mm -hmm. and those visions that the Lord gives you. I feel like that's helping build that up. Yeah. And it, especially for you, because I really believe when you really get into what your actual call on life mm -hmm. is, you're going to need that. Oh, yeah. Because I believe it's going to be, you're going to be dealing with the supernatural mm -hmm. in some fashion. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, I think that just came to my mind was, is, you know, faith is the foundation of everything. That's it. Of everything. You know, Jesus walked through uh, a town, and when uh, the, there was a woman, and this is the, uh, when, he, when she touched the rope, right? Yeah. She had all the faith in the world. Yeah. But when Jesus went to the one town, <laughs> he could barely heal anybody because they had yeah. no faith. Yeah. And what that story tells you is that faith is the mm -hmm. foundation of Christianity. Faith is the foundation of it all. And faith is going to get you places. Because he's the same man. Mm -hmm. He's the same Jesus in this town as exactly. that town. And he even told us it was your faith. Mm -hmm. By your faith you've been made whole. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, we, we can talk about faith and say we have it, but there's, there's a deeper, that most mm -hmm. holy faith. Yeah, that we have to exercise. About. Absolutely. We have to exercise. We have to keep stepping out. Mm -hmm. And as we keep stepping out, it grows. Mm -hmm. And it grows and it grows every time we step out. Yeah. You know, our bucket's getting filled more yeah. and more and more. you got to be filled exactly. up so you can And that's out. why, you know, um, you, you, gotta, you have to keep washing and praying yeah. all the time so yes. you can keep filling that bucket. Because, you know, even Jesus said, your, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. That's it. You know? That's it. Your, your spirit wants to do right, mm -hmm. you know? But that flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. So but how, I want to fast, you know, and I want to get up, mm -hmm. and I want to get up early to pray, oh, yeah. and <laughs> whatever and our all thing it, is. Yeah. And, and you, but that's what Jesus wants. He wants mm -hmm. us to step out on faith even when we don't feel mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that means something to him. That's what impresses him. Hey, how you doing, family? My name is Pastor Brandon Davis. And I'm co-pastor Alfreda Davis. We're the pastors of Living Word Family Worship Center, and we just want to tell you it is a blessing to be connected with Joseph Storehouse, what they are doing for this community. I tell you, if you want your church to grow, you have to sow. In this place, Joseph Storehouse is sowing into lives, sowing, filling individuals, not only spiritually, but physical needs are being met and body of Christ, but other churches, we need to come together and sow in and be and covenant to partners ground. to this good ground, yeah. this ministry here, this food ministry here, because people need help. And so I just thank you, I, I beg you, I, I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, sow in to Joseph Storehouse. And while you're coming here to be a blessing, you'll be like me yes. and get blessed. So we came thinking we were gonna be a blessing, babe, and we got our socks blessed yes. off. So blessed to be a blessing. So in the Joseph Storehouse. Thank, Thank you. you. I was going into one of the local stores a few years back talking about God moving in your life and God's will for you and you walk it out. 
this is very important. And I walk in and I'm looking for a billfold and I'm going to make this kind of fast and couldn't find what I was looking for. One of my cousins worked there and I hugged her neck and told her I loved her. And as I walked by this woman, the Lord said, she's going to have a little girl. And I thought, oh no, 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 oh God, I don't even know who this is. No, that was, a, that was a Bill Woodson moment right there. That was wrong. So I turn around and walk off. And as we're walking and talking with my cousin, she touches me on the elbow as she walks by. And the Lord said, tell her, she's going to have a little girl. And she will know the name when it's born. I thought, I ain't doing it, God. I ain't going to happen. You do it. You make an elephant walk in the room, polka dots, and give $100,000 bills away. And then I'll do it. Well, as you and I both know, that didn't work with God. Okay? Because there wasn't no polka dot elephant. There wasn't $100,000 bills being floating around. So after about the fourth time, I said, okay, God, I'm going I'm to do it. And I walk up to her and I say, ma'am, honey, you don't know me from Adam. But God told me to tell you. Believe me, I wouldn't tell you if he hadn't have told me. I don't even want to tell you. But I did. And I said, you're going to have a little girl, and you'll know what to name her when she's born. And she turned and looked at me with all, and her eyes got real big, and I thought, oh, God, I just messed up. M missed it, God. Well, as I proceed to leave, she said, sir, 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 sir. I said, yes. She said, did God say I would know what to name her? I said, yes, honey, and there'll be a her, or you wouldn't know what to name her. She said, okay. I left it alone. I thought, I'll never see this woman again. What am I going to be, wrong? I felt that way. I'm sure you felt that way. I have many, 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 many times. And then all of a sudden, eight years pass. Never seen her again. Never, didn't, I didn't know where she was from. I don't, know, I don't know her name today. But my grandbaby starts playing softball, my youngest one. Eight years later. And we're out there, and my son goes every night to the softball field, and helps practice, and so on and so forth. He comes to me one day and he says, Dad, 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 come here, come here, come here. I said, what, son? He said, like it's on his phone, he said, do you know this woman? I said, no. She changed in eight years. <laughs> Hello? He said, okay. He said, uh, see it, little girl out on first base or third base? I said, yeah. She's eight years year old and she's playing with my daughter, your granddaughter. I said, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. He said, she's sitting right over there. And I thought, I looked at her and went, don't ring no bell for me. He said, well, this will. She came up to me last night and she said, I've seen two old men with you. And one of them has gray hair more than the other one. And she said, Please tell me one of them is your daddy. And he said, well, you know, my father-in-law and my dad does come occasionally. She said, can I see pictures of them? So she does. He scrolls through it. She said, nope, not him. He went through that and said, she points, she said, him, him, that's your dad. Please tell me that's your dad. She said, well, yes, he said. She said, you don't know this. But eight years ago, that man walked into where I worked and had never met me. And he told me God said, and I didn't believe him because I had tried five times and lost five babies. And the doctors told me I would never have a baby again. And I'm speaking, I'm speaking to somebody that I'd never have a baby again and I had lost hope. And he walks in looking for a billfold, and he tells me God said. And I looked at the, my co-worker and said, he doesn't know what he said. 
I've lost five and my doctors just got through going out to a doctor's visit and said, you won't ever have a chance to have another baby. We want to do what you will never have one. She said, that day I was scheduling the appointment and that day I said no one more time. And she said, by the way, will you tell him that's that eight-year-old girl? And by the way, that's my son, too, running around at my feet. God, give me two. Tell him I know God spoke to him. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You need a word. You need a now moment. And it's headed your way now. Catch your dream. When you get in a relationship, you're supposed to, and it's, I've learned this a lot lately, is that when you get in a relationship, it's like a, it's, you're running a marathon because you're in, towards God. Mm -hmm. So you're by yourself running a marathon towards God, mm -hmm. trying to finish with God. And when um, when you want, get in a relationship, you want to find somebody that's running the marathon with you. Right. And y'all are going to run the marathon together right. and grow towards God. But essentially what I was doing kind of at the end of the relationship was I was kind of trying to tug her on with mm -hmm. me. Yeah. But it wasn't her time. God yes. wasn't ready for her to go fully yeah. go to the path that I was going on. You you just grew faster. Exactly. And that's an, essentially what ended up happening. And I'm glad that the Lord has provided me this revelation of being able to see mm -hmm. everything that's happened this way. Yes. You know, because... I was at I was at a heart it, I, it, it hurt yes it does you know it hurt really bad mm -hmm. you know that that kind of emptiness in your that heart broken heart it's but it's a what real feeling. essentially I, it, it hurts mm -hmm. but essentially God was saying mm -hmm. I got you mm -hmm. I'll fill that mm -hmm. part of you up and and especially at your age and, and people even older know in a relationship sometimes just means not right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You don't know that she won't exactly grow and mm -hmm. and, and you all come back together and yeah. you also don't know that he might have something else even better for mm -hmm. you. But but for right now, he needs your undivided yeah. attention. And, yes, and I and that's the thing. Is I was like, Lord, you know, I, I just need to put my attention on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul talks mm -hmm. about. You oh, know? Yeah. That's what Paul's talking about is your time is divided, mm -hmm. you know, when you're like, especially once you're married, your time is divided. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can, right now, you can do what you're, whatever you, you know, that you open doors that you want to walk through mm -hmm. as far as missionary work or whatever, with a wife or a girlfriend even, mm -hmm. to have a relationship, you have to have some time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. It's, it's been, it's been. A, a, it's not easy, but yeah. you're doing, you're making the right choices. Oh, yeah. And. That's all I could ask for, yes. you know, yes. and I'm still going to make some wrong choices along mm -hmm. the way. I know that, but I know when I do make those wrong choices, I am going to learn, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm going to, I pride myself on, you know, if I do make wrong choices, I'm going to learn. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, it's, but the, the thing is, is I'm always trying to open my mind up mm -hmm. to learning. Mm -hmm. You That's always want to do yes. everything you can to learn it, it, from the day you are born to mm -hmm. the day you die. Because a lot of people make the same mistakes, but they don't learn from them. Exactly. And then they make the same mm -hmm. one, the same one. Oh, yeah. And that's something way, people way oh, yeah. up in age haven't figured that one out yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. But the, it's also pride, you know. Yeah. The prideful, oh, yeah. oh I've already, I already um, know yeah. about that because yeah. I'm 57 mm -hmm. years old, you know. Right. It's prideful. Right. But the thing that I'm realizing, you know, as, as a human, I'm not as powerful as I think think as I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not some superhero. You know, mm -hmm. you see all this stuff on television, these superheroes, oh, yeah. people pride themselves yes. to be a superhero, to be somebody that they're not. Mm -hmm. God is the ultimate superhero. Yeah. And once you recognize that, you're still, a, we're, we're all still very powerful, but we're not to the magnitude that a lot of these people think they are. Right, right. We're, we're lower than that, Yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. That's who we were meant to be. Right. We're not meant to be the person to save the day every yeah. time. Yeah, right. God is. Right. You know? And I think it's important that people realize that because that puts that pride away. Mm -hmm. That pride is what blocks it off because then you're yes. ultimately comparing yourself, you know, to God a little bit. And once you're able to do that, it's just a relief that mm -hmm. you don't have to. I don't stress. I don't have to do that. I don't have to. You know? Exactly. And I'm, I'm telling you. These past six months, I don't stress. Yeah, I don't stress. Because you're doing what what is your business, mm -hmm. and not someone else's. Exactly. I mean, 
Mm -hmm. I don't stress mm -hmm. about other people, mm -hmm. you know, because I know uh, God's going to get you one yeah. day. Right. You know, and right. you're going to have that opportunity. Right. And, you know, it's up to you to make the choice mm -hmm. to do that. It's mm -hmm. not up to me. That's right. You know, and, and that's another thing. I can't let them, you know, wanting to make the right choice so, so bad. You know, I can't let that get in the way of their walk because right. God has a time for them. Right. God has chosen a time for them. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully they choose that right choice when that time is presented to them. Because, but being on this side of it, you know, the Jesus sits at the door to knock, and mm -hmm. I used to say, sometimes I want to open the door and push them in. <laughs> but he doesn't yeah. do that. Yeah. He just stands there patiently, but mm -hmm. if we were doing it, we would have gone in there and yanked them in. Exactly. And that's not... That's just not how it's supposed to mm -hmm. be. You mm -hmm. know, we have to walk as Jesus walked, mm -hmm. or at least try to mm -hmm. do that. You know, and Jesus didn't yank people and be like, you follow me now, yeah. you know, bow down to me, yeah. you know, do all this. They, and they did, could have. They did that they could have, on their own choice. That's it. That's it. And that's, that's, that's just that, to me, that shows me how much God loves us mm -hmm. and, and how much Jesus loves us. Yes. Is that they're willing to give us that choice. Mm -hmm. And that is just amazing to me. Because I know if, if I was a God, I'd be like, no, you bow down to me right now. <laughs> You know, because that's what I think. Like, yeah. I created you. Yeah. But he gives us yeah. that choice, and that, to me, is the most amazing thing. I mean, I just, oh. Especially since he knows we're going to turn around and say, yeah. well, how could a God let that happen? Mm -hmm. He, I know they're going to say that. Oh, yeah. So he knows they're going to say oh, yeah. that. And yet, he does, and he knows it anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just put, man, I'm telling you, just plant that seed mm -hmm. and let God do the rest. That's it. That's, the most important thing that mm -hmm. I, I feel like I could tell anybody mm -hmm. is just plant the seed, your job's done. Yeah. Your Amen. job is done. Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. I have one of your books, and I love it. Straight from the Bible, over 90 symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream. Find out what it is the Lord is saying to you. Get Dreamcatcher Journal to help catch your dreams. The theme today seems to be never give up. If you find yourself in a ditch spiritually, get up, dust yourself off, get back behind the wheel and get back on track. Never give up. Bill spoke with a woman he never met before who had been trying to have a baby and he encouraged her never give up. Years later, he met the baby and the baby's younger brother. God knows what's going on in your life. Never give up, even after a broken heart. Catch us here next time on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams. I come to Love's Way Church not because the gospel is not being preached to other churches, but because that I have found that they truly have a heart after God, a heart of compassion. The Bible says that though there be 10,000 instructors in Christ, there are yet not many fathers. And I truly believe that there are pastors and teachers, but there is also a compassionate heart of God that can't be matched at any other place that I've found other than this place, Love's Way. Join Pastor Johan at Love's Way Church, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m.